All right, folks, welcome back to the dudesiest dude show in the world. We have an unboxing today, and I'm quite excited. I actually already popped open the seal because I wasn't sure what it was. But I have not, uh, you know, I haven't been in here yet. ABW, baby. American Blade Works <coughs> from uh, River's Edge Cutlery. This is a knife that um, many people have been telling me for a long time to try. Uh, I hear uh, pretty good things about them. Uh, I hear that they have really, really good cutting geometry. Um, we will see. Uh, USA made, uh, obviously, uh, which is great. Love to have another USA made knife in the collection. Love to support uh, American manufacturing whenever I can. Let's check her out. All right, so this is one in micarta. Looks like we got a nice titanium backspacer, a nice titanium milled clip. Ooh, cool, we got a Made in USA on the pivot there, and it's in Magna Cut. Kind of feels different than I expected. Let's go ahead and give it a flip. All right, that flipped pretty good. Warncliffe blade. Okay, yeah, it feels thin behind the edge, but not like insane. Um, it's not very thin blade stock, it's pretty average. Um, let's see here. Kind of cool that you can see the, you know, it's a it's a milled um, bevel. It's not a, a, a belt ground bevel, so you can see kind of the, the lines in it this way, which is kind of interesting and unique. Um, I also hear they do great um, with their heat treating on the Magna Cut, so this should be, you know, uh, really good Magna Cut, hopefully. Um, so it's an inset liner lock. I'm gonna flip this a few times here. A little gritty in the pivot, I'm sure that'll work itself in. Perfectly centered. Kind of a lot of extra handle there. You can see where the uh, where the tip is and how much extra handle there is. Not the biggest deal, but um, usually I kind of, I don't know, I kind of like it when knives, the handle kind of ends, you know, very quickly after the tip. I think it's gonna break in really smooth, but I can just feel there's like some little gunk on there or something. The flipper tab's nice and comfortable. It goes, yeah, pretty good. And you have a nice choke up area here. Um, yeah, that's very nice. Very, very nice. The micarta is not like the super fuzzy type micarta. It's, um, you know, you could feel the texture, but it's not fuzzy. Um, but it looks really nice and it'll probably darken up over time as well. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to kind of get a feel for this. Um, one thing I noticed right off the bat is um, kind of a, a large space in here um, between the, you know, the blade and the, uh, the handle scales. Um, usually if something has like, I don't know, smaller tolerances, um, like if you look at this in comparison, like there's just no space in there at all. Uh, let me let me find a better example. Let's see here. That's not a good example. I can't reach all the way over there to, to my knife case. Anyways, you guys know what I mean. Um, if you look at like a, a really uh, precision made knife, here, let's get the hinderer. Um, all these gaps in here are very, very tight and small. Here they're pretty large. It reminds me kind of like a, a Kaiser almost. How oh, there's just more more gapping, you know. And it's not a big deal. It's just something I just noticed, you know. Uh, this knife is 200 bucks. Uh, does it have titanium liners? Probably, right? Let's see. Where's my, uh, where's my little magnet thing? Where is that dealio? Oh, I have this. 
This, oh my god, they're so strong. My special magnets for detents. Uh, okay, it's a, attracting something. Okay, yeah, so the liners are steel. The clip is titanium. The backspacer. Huh. Maybe it's not. These are so strong, it might be uh, attracting to the hardware or something. I don't know. I'm not going to say for sure because I don't really know. It flips pretty good. Let me see if I can fail it. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it doesn't slam out, but I, I definitely can't fail it. And give it a little bit of a, you know, any kind of oomph and it, it pops up nicely. I feel like it needs a, a slot or something. I mean, we have all this extra blade right here. I mean, a fuller, uh, a slotted hole, even thumb studs. I know some people have put thumb studs on theirs. I could see that being nice. But man, I feel like this would be a great... Oh, I can reverse flick it, actually. Kind of. Yeah, not really. It's got a kind of a, a, a nice, um, I don't know, industrial sort of feel. Like it feels like a more like a tool, which is nice. I like that. I like that feel. Um, I like the clip too. Let's see how it works. Stick it in my pocket real quick. Yeah, works really nice. Yeah, I actually really like that clip. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, I think I'm going to cut with it. Oh, you know what? We need to measure behind the edge because I had someone tell me that theirs was six thousandths behind the edge. And uh, usually when I hear that, it's like something that low, I, I think that maybe they're not measuring it correctly or something is going on because that is insanely thin. Yeah, mine's 13 thousandths, which is still really nice and thin. But six is like, holy shit, thin. Yeah, 13 thousandths. And then blade stock, 126 thousandths. Um, let's compare really quick to some other USA made knives. We got a TRM Shadow, which I think uh, has the best cutting geometry of uh, a lot of my knives. If you can look at the, the difference in blade stock thickness there. You know, I, I don't I don't see what people were talking about with, with this the crazy cutting geometry on this knife. Uh, it's definitely good, you know, nice thin, nice and thin behind the edge. Um, but I don't know, it, it's not like crazy. Um, I, I would say the the shadow would probably uh, slice better. You know, I'm starting to realize more and more that I think uh, blade stock thickness has maybe a little more to do with sliciness than uh, measurement behind the edge. Uh, if you measure a TRM behind the edge, it's not like it's not crazy thin. Um, let's do it right now. But they're 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 crazy slicers because of the blade stock. Let's measure. This is my new um, Neutron Two, by the way, in textured titanium. Behind the edge, TRMs are yeah fourteen thousand. So it's not it's not crazy thin. Just about the same as the American Blade Works here. Exactly the same. Um, but Guess which one's gonna slice better? The TRM. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that doesn't mean this is gonna be a bad cutter. I'm sure it'll cut great. Um, but um, you know, TRM is hard to beat. You know, Quiet Carry also the Quiet Carry Drift. This is a knife that has really good cutting geometry. Even thinner blade stock than the TRM. Even thinner. And let's check this behind the edge. I'm guessing it's probably going to be about the same. 14 thousandths, yep. 14 thousandths. Um, so blade, blade stock thickness is very important for sliciness, you know. Um, just picture like, you know, you can, hit, you, you, you can uh, shave paper with an axe if you sharpen that edge. If you get the edge sharp enough, you can cut paper, you can slice paper with an axe. But you can't easily cut through cardboard with an axe because you're forcing this big thick thing through material, right? 
you know, same with, and, and uh, yeah, I don't want to make it seem like I'm, uh, I'm saying this is not going to cut well. It is for sure. Um, but, you know, just talking about some other uh, comparable knives, and I think they're definitely slicier. Uh, then the, then this one here. I think this so th this is the uh, What is this one called specifically the model one? Okay Model one version six one cliff liner lock black micarta stone wash CPA magnet cut So yeah model one um, There's a there's a pretty cool uh, titanium uh, Version with inlays that, that popped up recently that I was tempted um, But I wanted to get this one first just to Try it first, you know. Yeah, can't wait to get with this thing. Can't wait to see how the magnet cut is. Um, yeah, this will definitely be um, definitely be a work knife. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Well, there you go, folks. Let me know what you think down below um, in the comments. And cut test come. Oh wait, we didn't talk about the uh, the sharpening choil, plunge grind. Yeah, that's interesting. You can definitely tell that it's done by a mill, rather than a, a belt sander because the plunge grind. You can see there's actually a, a separation between the bevel and the plunge grind. You can see a. It's almost like they came in the top of like a uh, a mill, you know, and and kind of at a, at an angle and and. Uh, milled the plunge grind um it's not really a plunge grind anymore is it <laughs> um yeah i mean you got a little space there could be wider um stop pins not in the way so you could make that bigger if you wanted to right on there you go folks please like the video before you leave i'd appreciate it I'll see you soon.